Today, Sally is flying to Eukaritopia on a school excursion. Eukaritopia is a large country bordering the Mediterranean Sea. It is home to an ancient and advanced civilization, the Eukaryotes. Sally's first stop is the Garden of Babylon, a Eukaritopian city known for its greenery and organic produce. Now, living organisms can be classified under three domains or groups bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota. Eukaryota, or eukaryotes, can be split into four kingdoms, including protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Eukaryotes are found in diverse environments and are capable of sexual reproduction. A large portion of the HSC biology course is devoted to studying eukaryotes, particularly plants and animals, so it's important to understand plant cells in detail. Over the three lessons on plant cells, we'll look at the structure and function of plant cell components. You should learn the function of each individual component, which is related to its structure. This lesson will cover cell components that separate organelles from the external environment, including the cell wall and cell membrane. We will also look at an organelle involved in the storage of genetic material, the nucleus. In the second lesson, we will focus on organelles responsible for the synthesis and processing of biological molecules, including the endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, and Golgi body. We will also look at organelles involved in energy transformation, the mitochondria and chloroplasts. In the third lesson, we'll cover organelles responsible for storage and cell structure, the vacuole, plastids, and cytoskeleton. Like all living things, eukaryotes, including plants, are made of one or more cells. They can be unicellular or multicellular. In general, eukaryotic cells, such as plant cells, are larger and more complex than prokaryotic cells, ranging from 10 to 100 micrometers in size. Remember, one micrometer is equal to one thousandth of a millimeter, or one millionth of a meter. Plant cells typically contain a membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. An organelle is an organized, specialized structure that is found in a cell. The complexity of eukaryotic cells may be attributed to these organelles. Each organelle has its own function, but all the organelles need to work together to ensure the plant's survival. Examples of organelles include the nucleus, mitochondria, and ribosomes. Some organelles are enclosed by one or more membranes, which allow them to maintain a different internal composition than their surroundings. Each organelle hosts a range of chemical reactions that are essential for the cell survival. Inside membrane-bound organelles, such as the nucleus, the enzymes and reactants required for each reaction can be present in high concentrations, allowing these reactions to occur faster. If you remember from Year 10 Science, an enzyme is a biological catalyst, so it speeds up the chemical reactions inside cells. Therefore, membranes allow organelles to operate more efficiently. In fact, a plant cell containing membrane-bound organelles functions like a city. In the Garden of Babylon, many individual departments in separate offices cooperate to run the city. Some departments, like the city council, make major decisions and manage important documents. Other departments, like the post office, are responsible for delivering goods between suburbs and to nearby cities. Each individual department performs a distinct job in a separate location, and the city could not run without their cooperation. Like these departments, each organelle has a distinct function in plant cells. Of course, all the organelles need to work together for the plant survival. Let's start at the outer layers of plant cells. Plants need to separate their internal components from the outside environment and protect themselves from harm. The outermost layer of plant cells is the cell wall, which is a rigid structure surrounding the cell. The cell wall provides extra strength, support and protection to the plant cell 
but allows most molecules to enter. The cell wall is made of cellulose, which is a polysaccharide. Remember, polysaccharides are long chains of sugar molecules. In this case, many glucose sugars are arranged in a straight chain to form cellulose. Let's see what Sally's up to. Her bus from the Eukaryotopia airport is just reaching the vine-covered stone walls surrounding the Garden of Babylon. The gates open automatically to let in visitors. Actually, the cell wall of a plant cell is similar to the city wall. It forms a rigid barrier that defines the boundaries of the cell, but still allows most substances to enter. The next layer of protection is the cell membrane. The cell membrane surrounds the cell's contents and separates them from their surroundings. The cell membrane is selectively permeable, which means that it allows some substances to enter the cell, but prevents others. The cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer, which consists of two layers of phospholipid molecules. Phospholipid molecules are comprised of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. We'll discuss the phospholipid bilayer in our upcoming video on the cell membrane. Wait a minute. The cell membrane works like the X-ray baggage scanners at the bus station. It checks everyone's bags to ensure that no foreign pests, fruits or vegetables enter the Garden of Babylon. They carefully control which visitors may enter the city because they need to protect their famous organic produce. Likewise, the cell membrane controls which substances may enter the cell's interior by being selectively permeable. Let's explore the interior of plant cells. Inside the cell membrane lies the protoplasm, which consists of everything inside the cell membrane. All the processes essential to the plant's survival occur in the protoplasm, such as photosynthesis and respiration. The protoplasm consists mostly of cytosol, the intracellular fluid that organelles float in. The cytosol is where most metabolic reactions occur, which are just chemical reactions that occur in living organisms. The cytosol is a gel-like fluid composed of water, salts, enzymes and organic molecules. Wow! Sally is standing in the city centre of the Garden of Babylon. The air smells like freshly mown grass. The farmer's market is on today, so the streets are busy. So much action happens inside the city. Similarly, all the action inside a plant cell is found in the protoplasm, inside the cell wall and cell membrane. The cytosol, in which all the organelles float, resembles the fresh city air, which is everywhere in the city. Now, let's look at the nucleus. The nucleus is an organelle which stores the information needed to control and coordinate all cell activities, including cell replication, growth and repair. Right now, Sally is visiting the City Council Centre with her class. She's reading a pamphlet which explains that the City Council documents and manages everything going on in the Garden of Babylon. Of course, the nucleus is like a City Council because it contains information on everything that happens inside the cell and manages the individual organelles. There are three major components of the nucleus that you'll need to remember. The nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm and nucleolus. We'll start with the first major component, the nuclear membrane. The nucleus is surrounded by a porous nuclear membrane, which actually includes an outer and inner membrane. The nuclear membrane is selectively permeable because the pores regulate the transport of substances between the nucleus and the external environment. The outer and inner membranes both consist of a phospholipid bilayer. Remember, a phospholipid bilayer is two layers of phospholipid molecules, which are composed of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. To enter the City Council Centre, Sally needs to swipe her student card on a scanner and pass a security barrier. These security measures control the movement of visitors to and from the City Council Centre. In fact, those two security measures, the card swiper and barriers, 
are similar to the nuclear membrane, which consists of two membranes that control the movement of substances to and from the nucleus. The second main component of the nucleus is the nucleoplasm, which lies inside the nuclear membrane. The nucleoplasm is a liquid area that contains the hereditary genetic information needed to run the plant cell. This information consists mostly of genes that are passed from one generation to the next. If you remember from Year 10 science, genes contain the instructions for making an organism and keeping it alive. This information is stored in the form of multiple linear chromosomal DNA molecules. Remember, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA molecules are made of a long chain of nucleotide bases in the shape of a double helix and encode genes. The third and largest component in the nucleus is the nucleolus, which is responsible for the assembly of ribosomes. Ribosomes are organelles involved in protein synthesis, which we'll discuss in our second video on plant cells. The nucleolus is comprised of ribonucleic acid and proteins. If you recall, ribonucleic acid is made of a long chain of small molecules known as nucleotide bases. Proteins are long, structured chains of amino acids. Right now, Sally is standing in the City Council Centre, marvelling at how much effort goes into documenting and managing everything that happens in the Garden of Babylon. The tour guide points to a massive computer inside the office. It processes information for the entire city, including the other departments. Wait a minute. The nucleoplasm resembles the interior of the City Council because it is where the plant stores all its genetic information. The nucleolus is like the City Council's computer, which processes information for the entire plant cell. Now, let's exit the nucleus and quickly revisit the interior of plant cells. The protoplasm, which consists of everything inside the cell, can be separated into two main areas, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Remember, the cytoplasm in a eukaryotic plant cell is different to the cytoplasm in a prokaryotic cell. The cytoplasm is the portion of the protoplasm that excludes the nucleus. Like the protoplasm, the cytoplasm consists of cytosol. Just imagine the Garden of Babylon, but without the city centre. That area is like the cytoplasm. It's everything that happens inside the cell, excluding the nucleus which is responsible for storing the information required to regulate and coordinate all cell activities. Let's revise what we've covered in this lesson. Firstly, it is important that you remember the components of a plant cell, and secondly, you should know the function of each component. The cell wall is a rigid structure made of cellulose that surrounds the plant cell, providing extra strength, support and protection to the cell while allowing most molecules to enter. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer that separates the cell's contents from their surroundings and is selectively permeable, which means that it allows some substances to enter the cell, but not others. The protoplasm consists of everything inside the cell membrane, including the cytoplasm and nucleus. The cytoplasm is the portion of the protoplasm that excludes the nucleus. The cytosol is the intracellular liquid composed of water, salts, enzymes and organic molecules that organelles float in. The nucleus is an organelle which stores the information needed to control and coordinate all cell activities. There are three main components of the nucleus, the nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, and nucleolus. The nuclear membrane consists of two phospholipid bilayers that surround the nucleus and are selectively permeable. The nucleoplasm is an area in the nucleus that contains multiple linear chromosomal DNA molecules that hold all the hereditary genetic information of the plant. The nucleolus is a structure inside the nucleus composed of ribonucleic acid and proteins and is responsible for the assembly of ribosomes.
We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on biology, check out our second video on plant cells.